And here is the playing hall for Millionaire Chess. One million dollars guaranteed total prize money. First time ever in the history of chess. It's a nice playing hall. It's a seven round tournament. I was lucky enough to participate in it. You're going to see some of my games here. All seven of them. And at the end of the seventh, after the seventh game, I will do a little, I call critique of the tournament. Both good things and things I think that need some improvement. But anyway, it was a great playing hall. It was a great site in a fabulous and exciting Las Vegas. Had a great time. Hope you enjoy the games. Here's some pictures of me from Millionaire Chess. Played in Las Vegas, Nevada with my cowboy hat there. There was a lady there taking a picture. She was nice enough to post them online for me. Uh, it was a really great tournament. There's another picture. That's the young man on the left. His mother is the one who's taking the pictures here. And uh, there's another picture. And that's me at Millionaire Chess 2014. It's a great tournament. Hi, right, folks. John Cordisco here. Round six of a tournament I played in the Millionaire Chess 2014 in Las Vegas, Nevada. And any of you guys that have been following the games prior to this in a tournament with me saw out of the first four games I had won half of a point. A half a game with one draw. And in round five I got my first win. So the escalator only goes up from here. <laughs> anyway, this is round six. Keenan Wright is white and I'm black. Let's get to it. It's going to be my usual Scandinavian. I play queen takes this time instead of knight f6. Queen d6, knight f3, knight f6, d4, bishop g4. Now, I play the Scandinavian a lot. I go bishop to g4, but computer always goes for knight to c6 or a6. Stopping the pesky check from the late squared bishop here. So I decided to go B to G4 anyway. If he checked, I would have just brought the bishop back. But he played bishop B2, which is kind of timid. C6. I know it's a little premature with the queen there, but I didn't want that knight sneaking in and causing any damage later. I know it loses a tempo, but I consider that bishop to e2 a loss of tempo as well, even though it does develop a piece. Castle, knight, rook e1, e6. Looking at my Fritz 13 off screen, it's about two thirds of a pawn advantage for white. Pretty typical. Bishop g5, bishop e7. Now I was, I was debating, now I have a choice. Depending on the next move or two, whether I castle queen or king side. He decides to go knight to e5. Computer liked h3, then after bishop takes, bishop takes rook d8. But after knight to e5, bishop takes, rook takes. Now I was really surprised with rook takes. Computer calls for queen takes. This probably makes more sense. I probably didn't like the fact that that open file would have been, I don't know, would have been too much. But he played rook takes because he didn't want to lose the pawn, but I think that pawn wasn't so free. Knight to d5. Knight d4. Getting a little crowded there. I just wanted to show you that was interesting there when I was looking at this. I mean, look at all the pieces. <laughs> That's crazy. Queen to c7, which was the computer move, so I'm kind of, I, I kind of like that. Back the queen off a little bit, get her out of the fray. Whoops. Bishop takes c7. Knight takes. Knight c5. Now, slowly but surely, I've got a small advantage, a little less than a half a pawn. Now, instead of knight to c5, the computer thought queen to d2, and after knight, rook to d1, <clears throat> would have been about two-thirds of a pawn advantage for white. That's a little better. After knight to c5, 
I played knight takes, pawn takes. I played rook to d8, chasing the queen off the file, and he went queen e1. I got my small advantage back again. He's a younger guy. We were playing really quickly, but we were playing fairly quickly. A lot of trades. I finally castled. And this is a move I don't understand at all, even though the computer suggests it. C3. Interesting. I think the idea is to go here and have a pretty good pawn structure on the queen side. I went b6, pawn takes, pawn takes. It was around this point here that the young man asked me for a draw. Now, I asked him how many points he had, and I had one and a half at this point. We're in round six. And I believe he had one point and one and a half. I don't remember. <clears throat> I said, well, let's play a little bit more, and the guy on the board next to me kind of shushed me a little bit. I believe there was a 30-move rule in this tournament after I had talked to him about the draw offer. At this point, of course, one and a half out of five, there's no way I could have taken a draw. So I decided to play on. And he went rook to d1. Now, it calls for b5 in the computer, or rook takes. I wanted to get rid of that knight. He was a pain in my behind. So I chased the knight off. Knight c4. I chased the knight again. And this is where he played rook takes. I played rook takes. Now, this is where the young man, I think, just got too relaxed. After that draw for I don't think he was interested in playing anymore. And he's probably thinking, okay, I'll play rook takes c6 which he did, and that's of course is the losing move. Knight d3, and I got a tiny advantage, well I got the play on. But after rook takes, he's thinking no problem, I'll take his uh, knight, he'll take my knight, I'll have a worse pawn structure on the queen side, he's got to pass pawn the a-file, but what he had forgotten was after pawn takes, rook takes, I can take and he can't take back rank mate he always forget about that guys with a back rank mate give you an idea what he'd have to do he'd have to go and I would take he would take and I go rook b8 and the game's over I'm a full rook up so after queen takes e7 Mr. Wright resigned and I thought to myself, wow, it was less than an hour. Uh, the time controls for this game were 40 moves in two hours with a second time control of 30 minutes sudden death. It was less than an hour. And this was day three, the last round of day three. Here's two rounds each day for three days. And the fourth day, there's one round. So I thought to myself, oh boy, I got to get out early. I'm in Las Vegas. I spent a little time out. I don't drink, so you know, I don't have to worry about any of that nonsense. And I was pretty happy. Two and a half out of six. I thought to myself, wow, wow, wow. I'm in the hunt for something. I wanted to get at least in the top 50. 21st through 50th place, pay $600 US. And I wanted to salvage some kind of self esteem, actually. And so I got a little lucky here. He just miscalculated. I think he got a little lax a days ago and relaxed after the draw offer. Anyway, folks, that's my game from around six in the Millionaire Chess Open 2014. I'm in the under 1600 section. And I want you all to remember, folks, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye bye. And here are some pictures from my trip to Las Vegas for Millionaire Chess. There's the Bellagio. Caesar's Palace, the Mirage, million dollars guaranteed prize money. First time ever in the history of chess. Just want to show you some pictures uh, from off of Las Vegas Boulevard. Beautiful hotels, beautiful buildings, uh, cabs everywhere. It's like New York. You can get around anywhere you want to. There's a Caesar's Palace on the right. Just wonderful. Another picture 
of Caesar's Palace. See a little reflection there. It's up on a bridge with glass behind it. It reflected a little bit off the glass. Bailey's down Las Vegas Boulevard again. Place is running 24-7. The economy is booming. I'll tell you, this is the epitome of capitalism, folks. I thought it was a great place. I wish I could spend more time there. Um, probably a little too hot in the summer, but... And there's Donnie Marie voted number one performers in Vegas. Very a personal friend of mine, very close, and she loves those guys, so I got that picture for her. There's Blasio again, and then we go down to, there's the gondolas, those boat rides, and the beautiful buildings, beautifully landscaped. I mean, it's, I'll tell you, I know the economy's tough in the United States, but if you can't find a job here, you can't find a job anywhere. Encore again, uh, building off a view off a bridge, a lot of traffic, but it's very uh, pedestrian friendly. They stop all the cars for the big intersections for the people to get through. And there's a waterfall there outside of a hotel. And there's me uh, smiling away. <clears throat> Excuse me. A nice, bright, sunny day in Las Vegas. I call that the needle. I guess you can go up on top of that. Another picture of the Wynn Hotel. Steve Wynn, the big entrepreneur in Vegas. Trump Hotel in Neiman Marcus right next to it there. The Mirage with the uh, Beatles show. And you see Caesar's Palace in the background. And poor Mario there. I cut his head off. There he is. There's Mario. There's people dressed up all over the place. Pirates, showgirls, you name it. The only thing I didn't see was Darth Vader. And there's the Eiffel Tower restaurant. Pretty cool place. And Britney Spears' Peace to Me show. Now, I'm not a big Britney Spears fan, but I went to the show, and it was really, really good. I'm glad I went. It isn't just a concert. It's an actual show. And she did very well, and so did everybody else that was in it. And there's a picture of the airport, me leaving Las Vegas. So there it is, a little picture tour of Las Vegas from when I was at Millionaire Chess in October 2014.